The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan podcast by night, all day. Jeremy, it's all your fault. Which, which part? How I got back into UFOs. It's all uh, your fault. If it, it wasn't for that awesome documentary on Bob Lazar, you got me, buddy. <laughs> that, that, you know, I want to weaponize your curiosity, Joe. That's it. Yeah. So Dave, with, Dave Foley got you back in. No, he didn't. No, no. Um, Dave Foley, uh, I was excited to hear that he had become obsessed with UFOs. Yeah. But he didn't really get me back in. It was the documentary. The documentary was so compelling. It's really good. And folks, if you haven't seen it, it's called uh, Area 51 and Fly- Bob Lazar, Area 51 and Flying Saucers. It's Nailed it. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Thanks, man. Um, that documentary for me was the reason why I started making films. I picked up a camera. I just wanted to know if that guy was telling the truth. Um, I was not a filmmaker. I was highly unqualified, like a lot of things that I do in my life that I end up loving. So that movie, the story, is what made me interested, too. How would you get Mickey Rourke? Well, that's a fucking weird story. Um, there's a tattoo shop called Mark Mahoney's Shamrock Social Club. Do you know about this? Yeah, I've heard of that place before. Okay. So Mark's been a good friend of mine, or I've been a friend of his since I was probably too young to be getting tattoos. And he let me come in and film for a couple years right before that movie. And he doesn't let, like, let a lot of people in there to film. Um, and Mickey came in one day. And Mark's like, oh, you know, Jeremy's filming. Can you want to talk to him about UFOs? And Mickey's like looking at me like, you know, what the fuck's this guy? Somehow he ends up taking this stiletto and trying to like stick me in the ribs with it. You know, like just play, kind of joking. But you got Mickey Rourke with a stiletto just getting a tattoo kind of jabbing you with a, you know, that. So that kind of bonded us kind of. He thought he was I was trying to stab you. That's he, was, he, was poking, he was poking me. Yeah, he was he was poking me in the ribs. So um, that was my introduction to Mickey. But he's got this voice that's like a fucking Tibetan monk, you know, like gravelly. Mm. And, and I know because I had to take his audio and listen to it. And it's just it's so bizarre. And I thought, who better to do this like controversial story than the controversial mickey fucking rourke talking poetry you know Mm. through the film so he was kind of that voice of our curiosity in the film so that's how i got him but basically i just sent an offer and he never responded so i went back to the tattoo shop randomly one day to see mark in walks mickey and i I made a joke it's like oh you just like to poke me with a stiletto but you don't take my movie offer seriously and he goes what offer and i'm like I, I, want, I need a narrator. Like, in the next seven days, I have to deliver the film. And he goes, I never got the offer. The next fucking day, he came in, because I know Mark was telling him, oh, no, help the kid out, you know? He came in, and he fucking recorded with me. He saved my ass, man. Otherwise, they'd have to hear my voice in the movie, because I didn't have anybody. Well, your voice would have been fine, but it was cool well, to have his voice. Thank you. I, I love that shit, man. People say his mouth sounds like he's got marbles in it. I well, he's fucking a, love it. That guy's lived a weird life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, he's, he, I think people like that sometimes are misunderstood. Like, I've seen this, like, incredible side of him in that he's, like, a gentle person, you know? Hmm. Is yeah. he fascinated with UFOs? He told me his UFO experience. And he had a UFO experience? He, he did. He did, and he let me record it with him. And um, I think, like anybody, he's interested in this topic, I think once you see something that you can't explain, it, it gets worse, you know? You get a little more frustrated about it because, mm-hmm. you know, you want to learn, what did I just see? So I think he, like most of us, you know, are, are interested in it. Yeah. Um, well, let's just get into it because there's been a lot going on lately. There's uh, yeah. a, Obviously, there's been a shit ton of sightings. And there's been uh, a lot of discussion uh, with high-level people about what these things are, what they aren't. What is, what's the latest and greatest in UFO information? Right. The, the world, in my opinion, has really changed since we started talking about this. So our history is, you know, you asked me to come in with Bob. We mm-hmm. did that. Okay, the idea that there's craft, that maybe our government has some and been reverse engineering them. And then... Uh, came in with Fravor, and we talked about his personal military encounter. And then our history goes to then George, George Knapp is here, who's like the godfather of the history of this. Bam. After that episode, man, things started really going crazy. And, and, and this is where our Senate and Senate Intelligence Committee and our Congress